when the environment turns dark in the way that it's turning in, in this country today, we need people who are, are more steadfast, who are more courageous, and such people are sometimes in short supply. I'd say so. That's the truth. <laughs> My goodness, you're you're a lot nicer about that than I was when I talked about it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just that we're you know we're in a um, we're in a we're not in a normal phase of politics, and uh, it's you know it's it's a little bit like you talk about law and order, and Republicans like to say things like you know I'm standing on principle. The other side can be a gangster side. We're not going to do the same thing. Uh, we're better than that, Dinesh. And I say, all right, if you're living in a lawful community, you've got cops, you've got law and order, then you want to be ultimately a citizen who plays by the rules. But then if you're going out in a covered wagon out west and it's in the middle of the 19th century and there are outlaws with long guns who surround your ranch and they want to burn your homestead and rape your wife and kill your kids. And, and then if you say things like, I'm not going to go go for my rifle because... I don't want to be just like them, Dinesh. Uh, you know, I'm better than them. I'm a person of principle. I'm, I'm going to write a strongly worded op-ed in National Review Online. I mean, the, you, you would be you would be so out of it, so deranged, so unable to comprehend the gravity of your situation that I wouldn't even know what to say to you. And and that's how I feel sometimes. Not just Dana Perino, just dealing with a lot of people the, who are the, in the Republican Party. Yeah, the entire Republican Party. Is fight, you know, is pillow fighting right now, and they're throw and they're throwing nuclear bombs, and I mean, j just the example of uh, Adam Schiff, the biggest liar has probably ever been in Congress in the in the history of the United States. They were afraid to give him a five dollar fine, and they and they said it was cause of principles, and they're just not in the fight. Uh, it, them days are over. The, the hey, I'm a principles, and we don't want to do this because this. It, it's just. You, you're going to have to. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. I've been saying for two years on this podcast the only way they're they're going to keep coming across that border. So you know, ideally, you want them not to cross the border or to send them back. So that's not going to happen. So what's the next solution? And I called it. I said, you turn every liberal city, and you just send you just empty out Texas. You send ever uh, L.A., New York. Uh, uh, Philadelphia, and you don't only do that, you start sending them to, to the Hamptons. You start sending them to Martha's Vineyard, Aspen, everywhere the Democrat elites play, everywhere their home is. And believe me, things will turn around. And what's happened over the last two months? A total 180 of so many Democrat governors and mayors. Well, this this shows you that uh, that you have to give them a taste of their own medicine. Look, exactly. we were in a little different uh, area, but same point. When Elon Musk sub suspended some liberal journalists on Twitter for one day, for 24 hours, you should have heard the shrieking, you should have heard the tears, the screaming, not to mention the fact that you had passionate defenses of free speech, long quotations from John Stuart Mill coming from these same people. So while they're doing it to you, they're gleefully engaging in censorship you do it to them and they quickly discover the virtues of free speech it's incredible and, 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 and we're and we're and we're and you know we're, you're going to have to get some tough people to fight this thing because it runs deep it, it really does and everybody's like well why couldn't trump defeat the deep state and i'm like this <laughs> do you know how deep it is and how many people in that watching dc sewer it's like 99% of the people are like that there. And, and, and there's th tens of thousands of employees. And there's also a very corrupt structure of incentives. And, and here's what I mean. If you think, for example, about the ordinary FBI agent, that guy is perhaps not a bad guy. He, you know, he's got a mom, he's got a wife, he lives in a three bedroom house. Why would that guy go smashing into the apartment of a 70-year-old grandmother, fling her to the ground, pull her by her hair, twist her arms behind her back, put handcuffs on her, drag her down the stairs, pull her into the street where her neighbors can come out and gloat and humiliate her in this way? So in other words, how does a police state get good people to do such horrific things? That's one of the questions I puzzled about as I thought about this movie, because ultimately it's not just evil people doing this to us. It's evil people who are able to recruit good people into their cause. And so explaining all this, showing it, unraveling it, this is the power of a movie. I want to take people into the bowels of the police state, show them how it works. I also want to show them how it affects ordinary people. And that, I think, is going to motivate people to say, OK, enough is enough. I'm going to do something about this.